Hey guys, what is going on? This is Carnal Number Five. Today we're going to continue our top ten series. Uh, we're going to move on to left fielders. I had a lot of people asking me if I'm just going to group all the outfielders together. Uh, no, I'm not for a few reasons. The list would just be too big. Um, I kind of want to spotlight some certain players and go over why I find them to be uh, valuable. And really, you just wouldn't see any of these other players on the list. We're just doing a, uh, you know, top ten outfielder list. Maybe down the road we can do top ten overall outfielders. Uh, you also have to keep in fact you can't just group all the outfielders together because some can't play center some can only play the corner outfield spot so no we're gonna go individually left field honestly is probably the weakest um i'd have to look at right field a little bit more but center field is definitely stacked so we're gonna start with left field today uh we're gonna go ahead and start with honorable mentions and our first honorable mention is gonna be this jim rice card <laughs> you guys will see a similar trend to a lot of left fielders a lot of them can hit pretty well um especially against one particular hand in this but they don't really have great fielding. Um, that being said, there are some diverse players on this list, and uh, we'll get into those later. But Jim Rice does make honorable mention. Nothing too great about this card. He hits lefties really well, hits righties all right. Uh, the next card on our list is gonna be this Ryan Braun. Uh, his fielding is actually really bad. He can also play right field. Hitting is, is pretty solid, nothing too crazy, um, but he at least does make the honorable mentions. Next on our list is gonna be this uh, all-star Michael Brantley that you get for completing um, I think it's it's just the Cleveland Indians uh, it's either a collection or a team epic I don't know um, but this is not a bad card honestly I just wish it had a little bit more power uh, he does hit righties really well and he has enough pop to hit bombs uh, fielding is actually not too bad for a left fielder and he does have above average speed and pretty good fielding um, I just don't really like the lack of power versus lefties and I wish he either you know if a card like this has a little more contact I wish he had a little bit more speed or uh, defense or something but this isn't a bad card and he honestly uh, probably comes in at number 11 for me another honorable mention and this will be our last honorable mention um, I'm not a huge fan that they've already made two least Gonzalez's this is a really good card I just don't like his uh, speed his defense is actually you know so so um, this is a good hitting card don't get me wrong it's just the cards above him um, all offered a more unique dynamic that uh, these other left fielders did not. This card was really close to. Um, it really comes down to whether or not you value defense and speed or hitting. And then when it comes to hitting, it's whether you value contact or power a little bit more. So that's going to round off our honorable mentions. Not too many. I left a lot out intentionally. Um, like Peralta, there's there's the flashback Peralta, and there's a few others that I just left out um, that just had really bad splits. So we're going to move on to our top 10. Coming in at number 10, and this is a really strange card. Um, you would think he'd have a secondary at second base. Uh, the fact he does have a secondary at third adds a, a little bit more value to him. You know, I would argue that the uh, the Luis Gonzalez before this card was probably a slightly better overall hitter. Um, this card just offers a little bit more versatility, and he has balanced splits. He hits righties really well, a little bit more power, but he has maxed out contact for lefties with maxed out vision, and he has a little bit better fielding and speed. Uh, than the Luis Gonzalez, so that's why he got a slight advantage. Um, same for the Brantley, I just find this card to be a little bit more dynamic uh, than the Brantley. You could argue that the Brantley, yes, he probably hits righties overall better. Um, I just like the versatility of this card and the balance. And number nine on our list, and I really thought about making him an honorable mention, but you really have to look at Cespedes' defense. Um, I really think it's overrated in this game, and they kind of underrated his offense. Uh, that being said, we're going to go ahead and base it off what SDS uh, gave him for his attributes his hitting is a little bit underwhelming uh, It very much is and I mean he hits okay like first righties It's not terrible and versus lefties. He has a little bit more power um, But his defense is outstanding if you make a comparison to any other cards. That's gonna be um, On our list spoiler alert Alex Gordon is on this list. I mean he's very similar to the Alex Gordon um, I don't know. I just I don't like his hitting as much as uh, really as it should be it should be better hitting but his fielding is great if you guys are looking for an elite left fielder this is probably uh, arguably the best one you can get in the game defensively him or the Gordon but really the defense carried this card so we're gonna go ahead and move on and next on our list coming at number eight and again this is a polar opposite than the Cespedes and a lot different than the Jackie but I do I would prefer to have this card over Cespedes and that's kind of how I do these rankings you know which card would I rather have and then I uh, rank them accordingly so I gave Schwarber a nodge over Cespedes and Jackie. I mean, his hitting, guys, it's it's no it's no secret. His hitting is what carries this card. But I would rather have a card like 
this than the Cespedes because left field, you know, you can kind of get away with a weaker defender. Yes, it's nice having that arm strength and fielding out there, um, but you can kind of hide somebody in left field, you know, similar to first base. Uh, yes, in the long run, having great defense can save you. And uh, I think sometimes, you know, in majors or major leagues that sometimes they think you can just stick anybody in left field and it is somewhat underutilized. Uh, with that being said, this card just hits really well. He has good power versus both sides. He's pretty much maxed out versus righties. Now, a reason I like this card over the Luis Gonzalez, you could argue the Luis Gonzalez is more of a balanced hitter. This card has more power versus lefties. Um, even though he has worse vision, I would still rather take a card like this um, that I know can be a power threat against lefties. And he's, you know, people are going to pitch around him. He's going to be able to get on base, draw walks, and hit for power. Uh, I would take that any day over the Luis Gonzalez. The Jackie, I think he's just a better hitter. And the Cespedes, I think that his offense is so much better than Cespedes um, that his lack of defense isn't as big of a deal. I think in the long run, this car is going to give me more value than the Cespedes. We're going to move on to uh, number seven. And coming in at number seven is going to be this breakout 94 overall Alex Gordon that was obtainable in the ticket store. I still think every now and then it'll show up there. So let me talk about why I prefer this card over the previous cards that I mentioned. Um, this card is probably the best defensively. Like, again, it's probably between him or Cespedes. Um, it's really close. But I prefer this card over the Cespedes because he bats left-handed. He can also play multiple positions. I wouldn't recommend playing him at first. Um, but, you know, that does add you know, a little bit of value at least. Uh, but the fact that he's left-handed and he's going to hit righties pretty well, 91-74. Uh, and he has similar attributes really to, like, the Kinsler. If I had to compare him to anybody hitting-wise, of course, I mean, it's not exactly the same because he bats left-handed, has a different swing and stance and all that. Um, but against lefties, he hits okay, too, 70 and 71. I think 70 is that threshold uh, that you want. Not the greatest vision, but we can't be too picky because there's not, you know, not a ton of elite left fielders on this list. But the fielding really carries this card. And, guys, it really depends what you value more. So how I look at it is I think in the long run that I think this card would give me a little bit more value than a Schwarber. Uh, no question, it would give me more value than a Cespedes, Jackie, you know, Rice, Braun, Brantley, and that other Luis Gonzalez. Um, this card is going to save you runs, and he also can hit really well. The fact that he's, uh, you know, left-handed, he's going to have the advantage more often than not with the opposite handedness. Uh, just a good balance card. So we're going to move on to number six. And again, we're going to kind of split this rank, the, both the Matt Holidays. Uh, I would say this one's a little better, but the other one, the All-Star one for the Cardinals, and we'll show that here in a second, is pretty good too. Um, this one I think is just overall a little bit better hitting wise. Uh, he's very balanced hitting. He can hit lefties or righties. Uh, 68 fielding, so he's kind of up there like the Luis Gonzalez. Um, a little bit better than a Schwarber, but you know, on, on the same page as like the the Rice and the, the Braun and all that. Actually, Braun was a little bit worse, but you guys get what I'm saying. Uh, just a very complete, you know, balanced uh, hitter. Not the greatest in the field, and that's really all you're getting with this card is this very, very balanced hitting. But left field, that's primarily what you're looking for. Um, I would take this card, you know, just, um, I think in the long run, it would just give me a little bit more value than the Gordon because of his uh, just great hitting. Um, the Gordon is close, but this one just has way more power uh, than the Gordon. I think he'd give me a little bit more value in the long run. Um, we're going to go ahead and show you guys the Cardinals one real quick. So, guys, this is the Cardinals one. Again, they're very similar. Um, he has balanced splits. I mean, he has an advantage versus lefties of contact, but he has a slight advantage versus righties with the power. Uh, this one also has um, more vision, but the speed and fielding is a little bit worse on this one. So I would say overall the, the Rockies one is a, you know, just a little bit more valuable. Um, I would say between this card and the Gordon, I would still probably take this card in the long run because of his hitting. Uh, you can make a case for Gordon. Um, it really depends how you guys want to mold your team. If you want to build them defensively from the ground up, you might want to go with somebody like Gordon or Cespedes, but uh, just if you're looking for pure balance hitters, um, I would give the slight edge to Matt Holiday. And they'll, both of those cards coming at six, I would say this one is six Bravo. The Colorado one is six Alpha. Move on to number five. We're coming at number five on our list, and this is a very dynamic and unique card, especially for left field. Now, keep in mind he can't play center field. A lot of people mistake uh, the fact that he can that he can't play center field. I've seen some people play him at center. Just because he has good speed doesn't mean he can play center. I wouldn't even chance it. He only can play left or right. And I really would only recommend him at left because of his uh, arm strength. His arm strength isn't, it's not good, but it's, you know, neither is 90% of the people uh, on this list. But guys, let me talk about this card and why I think it can give you a little bit more value in the long run over the previously mentioned cards. Um, it comes down to speed, guys, speed and stealing. This card gets on 
A single, it's an automatic triple. You just don't see a lot of cards like that in this game. And also, let's talk about his hitting. 99 contact versus righties, 78 power versus righties with 80 vision. Guys, you're going to be able to hit bombs versus righties. Um, no question in my mind, this card has enough power to hit bombs. And this card is a lot of fun to use. Defensively, I think this card plays above average. He has good reaction, so he gets a good first jump. Uh, I haven't. I think I've seen him make one error. 70 fielding is probably about average. So I would say overall, it's an above average fielding card. And you put him in left, just hit your cutoff because he doesn't have the greatest arm. Um, but with the vision the con and the contact and power versus righties, uh, he is a good hitter. Now lefties, hitting lefties is his weakness. That being said, guys, you want to change your approach a little bit against lefties. Kind of, uh, I would I recommend either using contact swing or X swing because he does have 50 power, which is enough to hit. You know, if you hit it down the line, if you pull it just down the line, you can hit it out. Um, but you really want to kind of just grind a bass versus lefties. Uh, you know, use that contact swing and put the ball in play and just rely on his speed. I've gotten so many, you know, weak ground balls, weak liners, uh, bloopers of this card against lefties, and then it's an automatic triple. And if they're slide stepping or pitching out a lot, they're going to fall behind in the count and they're going to be more wild. So this card just changes the whole dynamic of the game, in my opinion. And that's why I put him at number five, uh, despite his not so great hitting versus lefties. Number four is going to be the Star Jewel. And guys, when I think of the Star Jewel, I think of first base. Even his freaking card uh, shows him on first base. So it's unfortunate because if he actually was a first baseman, he'd probably rank uh, pretty high for the first baseman list. But he still ranks pretty well with the left fielders. Um, now, one reason I wanted to put him a little bit higher is because he can play first base. And this is really a card that you want at first base. Um, he has great power versus righties and lefties. Uh, his weakness is going to be contact versus lefties. It's not the greatest in his vision. Uh, defensively, he's average if you put him in left field. Um, he can also play center field and right field if you want to go that route. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, also doesn't have great speed. Um, but to me, I would probably play this card at first. He can play the outfield. Um, and he just has a lot of power. So I really like this card. Uh, you know, I think in the long run, um, you know, you can bat this card clean up and be just fine. I think he'll hit a little bit better than like the Holiday and the Gordon and probably provide a little bit more offense than the Brock overall despite Brock's uh, speed. It's really kind of what you guys value. You want hitting, speed, defense. So I put this card number four personally, so let's go ahead and move on to the number three. And coming to number three, we have this uh, Impact Veteran Chipper Jones. To me, you know, I think a Chipper has a third baseman and I would recommend playing him at third base. So I have to consider the fact you know that he can play third base for you guys um but let's talk about this card real quick he can hit he can flat out hit the one weakness hitting slightly i guess would be power versus lefties but he can still if he squared up you can hit it out with him uh he's got good vision and contact versus lefties so he can power swing against righties he's really good 94 contact and 81 power not the best fielding but again i would recommend him playing him at third you can play him at left too it's actually not a terrible idea to put him at left because the fielding, you might be able to hide him in left field just a little bit better. Um, but let's talk about the main reason I like this card, probably over the Star Drill. And it was really close with him and Star Drill. Uh, the fact he's a switch hitter, um, I just like that a little bit more. So that, I had to think about it. Would I rather have Chipper Jones or Star Drill facing a lefty? I think I would take Chipper. I would give him the slight edge even though the Star Drill has you know, really good power versus lefties. Um, you're just going to have to lay off those sliders in a way. People are going to be trying to go a fastball up and in. Uh, you're not going to have much time to react with this card. You have a little bit more time to react. You can also power swing. You'll still be able to hit well against lefties and the fact that he can play third base. Uh, this card comes in at number three. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and move on to our number two card. And I really think the number two card and the number one card are very similar. Uh, now, I will say that I really considered putting Chipper and Sargil over this card because of their versatility. But then I thought about it. I really think Luis Gonzalez is an amazing card in this game. Um, that being said, I personally wouldn't want to play him in the outfield left field you know we have so many options with you know everybody's getting Griffey and Dawson you have Alex Gordon for free uh, you have the Matt Holiday and Conquest there's just so many options on the left field that's why we don't see this card too much but if we have to actually rank these cards uh, 1 through 10 I think this is the second best left fielder in the game his hitting whether it's first righties or lefties is just great fantastic uh, against righties he's 97 93 um, not quite as good as Ted and against lefties he hits really really well as well so you know I would give this card a slight advantage over the chipper um, I think his hitting is just better than the Chipper Jones, regardless of the fact that you know, you know Chipper is a switch hitter and gets that opposite handedness advantage when he's facing lefties. But I would still think Luis Gonzalez would perform a little bit better for me personally against lefties. Uh, fielding, again, it's just not great like a lot of left fielders on this list, but I do think this is the uh, number two overall left fielder in the game as of right now. And the number one left fielder in the game is the all-star. 99 Ted Williams uh, that you get for completing the entire 
collection. Um, it's kind of hard to make an argument. Otherwise, if you just really prefer defense and speed, I can understand. But this card is probably the best hitting card in the game, you know, outside the Pepe Alizar. Um, bats left-handed absolutely demolishes righties, 99-99. Uh, and against lefties, he's obviously better than, you know, the Luis Gonzalez. I think the Gonzalez is, is you know, somewhat of a moderate close second, I guess you could say it. Um, but this card has 99 contact versus lefties, 87 power, 99 vision. It's just flat out better than a Gonzalez versus lefties. Um, the speed in this, uh, the speed in the fielding, just not the great similar to a lot of cards on this list in the Gonzalez, but I really don't think you can make an argument that there's a better left fielder in the game. Uh, if you're looking defense, yeah, you could you know make an argument for Gordon or Cespedes. I just think in the long run, this card is going to provide you provide you the most value in left field because of his hitting, it's just absolutely uh, outstanding. So if let me know what you guys think of this list, and let me know if you guys agree with my list. And um, I know I left a lot a lot of honorable mentions out of this list. I was done purposely. I just found that a lot of them weren't really usable. Um, but anyways, thanks for watching the video, guys. We'll continue next time to probably center fielders. Uh, so again, thanks for watching the video. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.